So Planet Zoo console is coming digitally on March 26th to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. Right now we've got the standard, deluxe and ultimate editions available for pre-order and we'll have more details on what those include and the DLC plans for the console edition to talk about at the end of our little Planet Zoo section. Now, it's not just me that's going to be showing the game today. I'm joined by some very talented people. I get to talk about the game, uh, the game that they get to make. So let's introduce today's special guest. <laughs> Welcome to the Fancy New Studio. I know you're not new to a Planet Zoo <laughs> stream, but, but it is a fancy new studio. It is a very well. fancy, fancy new studio. Uh, Adam's very excited because he's finally got the rug. Mm -hmm. He's, he was Sorry. very upset that there were comments on the last stream being like, you really need to get a rug. <laughs> and it was like stuck in the Out post. The it was on it. order and it was stuck in the post. So everybody, producer Adam's very proud of his rug. <laughs> um, but please introduce yourselves in case we do have um, some new Planet Zoo uh, people watching. Yeah. yeah, sure. So my name is Lisa Bowens. I'm a principal pipeline artist here at Frontier. And I'm just really excited to be back to talking about Planet Zoo. You might have seen me before, but if you haven't, I'm so excited. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'm uh, James Lockett. I'm the engineering lead. Shall we look at some gameplay then? This is currently running on Xbox Series X. So for those people at home wondering if the buttons didn't give it away, yeah, it's definitely on PlayStation. This is Xbox Series <laughs> X. Um, now, if you're a Planet Zoo fan, you have, will have played this level yourself. You've played this scenario. Um, but we're going to assume that maybe we've got people watching that aren't. Mm -hmm. existing Planet Zoo fans. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do today is while um, while those who are already fans are having a look at how things run on console, and this is a work in progress build, this is not the final gameplay, uh, and the team are squashing bugs and getting things ready for launch like troopers. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but why don't we talk a little bit about what Planet Zoo is and how it works for maybe some of the new people. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. so if, if you're not familiar with Planet Zoo, it's really all about giving you all the tools that you need to be able to create your dream zoo, whatever that looks like. <laughs> so we like to say limitless creativity and also a real authenticity of the animals. All the animals look absolutely gorgeous. I might be a bit biased, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 and of course, now that it's on console, you'll be able to do that from the comfort of your couch, if, so, if you so wish, which is always amazing. Um, yeah, so you can see here right now, we've got the Zoopedia going. It's where you go for all of your facts for your animals and know what you need to make them happy in advance, basically. Um, you can see here from the Zoopedia, you've got lots of shortcuts to get around the main game mm. uh, modes, which is jumping into the animal market here, where you can find new animals to add to your zoo. Um, right now, you can see we're selecting them from our storage that we've got and sending them to the zoo. Um, so yeah, when you do that and you set up a bunch of jobs, which your staff, if you've set them all up right, will then go and bring them in. Mm -hmm. So um, I think here we've got, uh, we've sped up the controls here. You can see at the bottom menu there's like a, the X button gets you to that quick menu for a, a bunch of nice shortcuts for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've yeah, sped up time so that we get the <laughs> animals delivered quickly. There then yeah, have a bunch of pandas in here. Time and pandas, ready to go. truly iconic. And, and when iconic. you click on them as well, you can see welfare is a really big part of the mm. game. Uh, it's important that your animals are looked after and well provided with food and also their habitat is really important. So here you can see we've opened that menu. There's a bunch of different parameters that contribute to whether or not an animal is happy in that habitat. And it's really in your best interest to try and you know, make them as happy as possible because they're cute. Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> yeah. You can see yeah, here as well that um, what, uh, another shortcut we've added here is that you can pin their terrain requirements that they've got uh, to the console while you then are in the terrain editor. And then, yeah, you can fly around your habitat and just make sure they're happy with the terrain that they've got. So this is like putting mm -hmm. more grass down, putting more soil down, whatever they want. Like, obviously, like alpine animals and that kind of thing will want mm -hmm. snow and yeah you want to be able to set them up for that kind of thing. It's also immensely satisfying to watch the sliders go up and down. It really <laughs> is, to make it go when into like, green. When it goes into green, you're like, yes, my, thrive, mm. my children, thrive. thrive. <laughs> Please, especially you, pandas. Yeah. Exactly. But here so, we have plants. Um, yeah, we've got yeah the plant screen here. It's just like, what, what are they happy with? You can see there's some uh, plants that have made their way into this habitat that they're not happy with. 
And we've got lots of shortcuts in this menu to just quickly remove them if they're not going to be good for your animals. Uh, they can handle a little bit of things that they don't like, but you know, it's like you always want to aim for the yeah. optimal every time, right? We want happy animals. Yeah. Yeah. And to be that way, they have to be as close to their natural environment as possible. Yeah. So that's why you can use a bunch of the filters to be able to get as close as possible to the biome or the continent that your animal is from and get all those plants in that they're used to seeing and they'll enjoy having in their habitat. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that think... makes a lot of sense, because this is actually uh, product manager Tom, who was on the live stream last month. This is actually his gameplay, so if anyone likes to think, do you guys get to play video games at work? <laughs> we do, but we have to play to be able to make videos like this. It's not yeah. quite, uh, <laughs> it's not quite, he, he was diligent in his placing of the mm. plants for us. Yeah, yeah, he went all out to make the perfect little <laughs> yeah. thunder habitat, right? He's, uh, he so... was quite proud of his work, um, but we can make fun of him for doing something else wrong later on. Yeah. So you can see here, um, just placing the plants down, um, there's some shortcuts on the animals info panel that lets you get to um, some filters that you need really quickly. Um, and then, yeah, you can see from his video, he's like using the advanced tools to place things in the way that he wants and, you know, really get a nice feel for a unique thing. It's like the, the wonderful thing about watching pe uh, people play this game is just no one builds a zoo the same way, right? It's like things come out crazy. Some people do it, you know, like, it, you know, he's doing a really good job. I forget by the end of this, it comes out looking lovely. He does a great job. Um, Whereas, you know, you see him an I build a zoo. <laughs> no, you get a program yeah. a zoo every time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It's very, very regimented. Actually, we have to say that we have an incredible um, existing uh, group of creators on Planet Zoo. Really, yes. really talented that makes them, I mean, yeah, the, the, the uh, mind-blowing stuff. Are, are I think it's arguably one of the best parts of the job yeah. is getting to see, because obviously we, we try to provide a lot of fun stuff for people to yeah. build with and create that dream zoo. And the dream zoos that get created never stop surprising me or yeah. amazing me. I'm just like, how did you do that? That is That must have taken so much time and effort. And I'm so happy that people love it so much that they, they do that. that yeah. My favorite yeah. is when they take something that doesn't look like what it is and then like they flip it or rotate it and put it in a place and then build a thing around the it. The rocks are just, you know, the, the workman's tools. It's like yeah. you can make so much out of just rocks. Yeah, and I think <laughs> Surprising that's, every time. Yep, that's what's one of the best things for me about Planet Zoo is if you just want to be able to place stuff that you guys have made or if you want mm -hmm. to import stuff that community members have made uh, from the workshop, you can do that. But if you're really feeling, really feeling creative and up to it, it is limitless in what yeah. you can make. I think blueprints are an excellent way if you're a player who wants to focus a bit more on the management mm. or you want to spend less time building. They're an amazing time to get like quick results that look great yeah. in your park. Yeah. And then if you want to go into the nitty gritty, you can absolutely do that on the console as well. With all the updates that we've done to kind of how it works and how the controls are, it's actually really easy to build, like as you can see, your own little habitat. Uh, Tom's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, you can build uh, from your laid back position as well. It's quite chill actually mm -hmm. when you get around to it. So, but yeah, so, uh, we, we have workshop support, you yes. know, so that's the thing. Um, there will, I don't think it's in this video, but yeah, you can find other players' blueprints and that'll be signing up with uh, the Frontier account. And yeah, you'll be able yeah. to upload straight away and play other people's stuff, even their zoos. Yeah. So it'll be lovely actually. Yeah, and there is there's some very impressive stuff uh, that I'm sure will be made and uploaded. So yeah, if you're not yeah. feeling creative, mm -hmm. don't worry, you can still have something incredibly beautiful thanks to the hard work. Yeah, we tend to get outclassed pretty quickly, right? <laughs> Just with almost the instantly. I mean, Almost instantly. Yeah, instantly. Like, I don't, I don't want to say you guys aren't good, but I've <laughs> yeah, seen yeah. some stuff. I've We've put a couple things. blueprints in this game and none of them come close to what the community <laughs> have made. So Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom's doing a very, very good job, but you can see now uh, in the top right hand corner, we're still not quite there in terms of getting everything that our little guy Yeah, pandas need. are pretty fussy animals, and that's the fun thing about Planet Zoo as well. If your animal has rather specific requirements, the game will also encourage you to meet those by, you know, making it match to the, the sliders and making sure that they have everything they need. And yeah, it's interesting. I love seeing the differences in animal needs, what mm -hmm. they want you to place and, or yeah. not place. There, there is some animals that are quite difficult to keep you know, track of. They all require mm -hmm. like a large amount of space. And then mm -hmm. it's just like, oh yeah, how do, you, how do you fit this into your zoo? And you're like, yeah, you just got to find the right corner, yeah, find the right exactly. space. Uh, someone says Planet Zoo is a really good looking game. It is, and it's actually incredibly impressive that, um, you know, there is, for, for me, you boot it up on console and it still looks absolutely incredible as well. Like I said, we're on playing. If you're joining, this is Xbox Series X gameplay, which is really, really nice. 
But also I think here, you know, Tom is doing an awful lot with like foliage and shrubbery, but that's just not all that you can place in here. I don't believe Tom puts down like a climbing frame, for example, but there are a lot of other items as well for the animal enrichment. Yes, I think we'll definitely get to those in a second. It's another very important thing about animal welfare, and a lot of this comes directly from zoos. Like we've yeah. gone and talked to people and said, how do you keep your animals happy and interested and, and nurtured, not just kind of in terms of feeding them, but also keeping them occupied, making sure that they can display their natural behaviors and stuff like that. And enrichment plays such a huge part in that. Yeah. Because obviously, I mean, if, if you have these animals, you want them to be able to do what they would want to do in their natural habitat as much as possible. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. I'm sure we will see that in a second, so I'm going to wait. I don't want to spoil stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, Tom is now putting the last of the plants down, making sure they're plant happy, uh, and then we can maybe put some enrichment in for our pandas as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about maybe getting this ready for console in the sense of mapping to the controller? Because I think that's a big one for a lot of people, is how you yeah. take a game, mouse and keyboard, and then make it feel intuitive and smooth on a controller. I've played it. You've done an incredible job. <laughs> but you get to you. sell it to the world now. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. So it's like, yeah, porting a, a very much PC-focused game to console. It's like, you know, we, we had some pointers already from um, Planet Coaster console when that came out. Uh, and we've you know, made some changes, made some differences here. Um, so you can see, like, uh, one, one of the key things that I found very helpful throughout the whole thing is the uh, button prompts in the bottom right that mm. just always keep you reminded of what you can do in your current scene. So it's like, um, Planet Zoo is a game with many tools, right? Yes. You've got paths, you've got terrain, you've got barriers, you've got all the scenery, and everything has, you know, like things that you need to do with them, things that will help you do, you know, the cooler, you know, like advanced mm. move stuff, like putting stuff in the exact position that you want. So yeah, the button prompts are very helpful to just point you in the right direction wherever you go. Um, we've got shortcuts all over the place. We've added a radio menu that is yes. just, you know, very helpful for just very quickly if you, you know, you, it becomes muscle memory basically as you start building where you're just like, boom, uh, you know, hold the Y button, spin the thing around and then just, um, you're, you're doing your advanced moves that you want. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's just like, it, it, it's a bit hard, you know, mapping so many mm. keys that you have on a keyboard and mouse. But yeah, as you're thinking about it with this, but <laughs> it does just become quite, yeah, quite, quite, you know, like, um, like I said, muscle memory is like mm. the key thing. And um, yeah, um, and as you can see here, Tom's been just whizzing around doing all of this and there's no slowing him down. No, so. He's getting all the enrichment <laughs> in now. And yeah, we're up, we're up to the enrichment. Then yeah, after, like, make so. him look happy. <laughs> look at him when he's gone for a swim. But like you said, this is all about, you know, it's not just uh, a game about building. It is about kind of learning about animals, it is mm -hmm. about their welfare, and it's about their happiness. And for that, they've got to be entertained. Yeah, I mean, we, we play games. They want to play with things. They want to sniff boxes and food. It's really important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Tom did say to mention that he forgot that he could build them a, a little climbing frame. So he said, please tell everyone I'm sorry I didn't build them a climbing frame. <laughs> yes, of course you can. And you can build it both piece by piece if you want to use all those advanced mm. controls to place your assets, or you can also use one of our blueprints or mm -hmm. one of the workshop blueprints. Exactly. So many different ways. <laughs> so we're going back into some of the management stuff now. So we've done a mm -hmm. fair bit of building, a little bit of creating, just a, the surface level. Now we're doing the work zone stuff. Again, Tom said he panicked and just grabbed some work zones. But this is part of the management of the game, right? We're putting yeah. Tom on blast here. <laughs> he's not. He's chosen to not be here to defend himself. Tom, I know you're watching this. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the work zone system you can see there is all part of our like overhaul of some UI screens. I'll let you do the similar things that you could do in Planet mm. Zoo. And um, yeah, it's like staff management is a key point, making sure they do things efficiently. Um, putting Tom on blast again, like certainly his work zone will have sorry, them spread Tom. out sorry. over the map. And it's just like, yeah, you know, you want to build your work zones condensed yeah. and, you know, make sure they're what, uh, the, the amount they have to walk between everything they want to do is short. But, you know, it's all part of the experimentation and figuring out what works. Yeah, <laughs> and we're keeping the animals happy, but we've got to keep the guests happy too. So it is not just about building the, uh, the environments for our animals to, to thrive in. You've actually got to build a successful zoo. Yeah, and to get that, we've, we're here, we're trying to feed people. We've got the lovely Chief Beef from the Gulpy, who uh, any of our Planko people should recognise. <laughs> they will not go hungry. They will not go all thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Tom's doing, I fair play to Tom actually. I feel really bad for bad mouthing him. I'm sorry, Tom. You've done a great <laughs> You've job. You've done a sweetie. great job. Uh, and the pandas job. are happy, which is what we wanted. Exactly. 
But yeah, you can see him using our uh, browser system at the bottom there, going through the submenus, which just helps you get to things that you want quickly and easily. There's filters on there which you can get to really quickly, which just allow you to even quicker get through the sheer number of items you have on offer in Planet Zoo. There's just, yeah, so many things to place down at any point, and also adding your blueprints to that list allows you to just yeah. see something that looks pretty very quickly, and you're like, oh, you know, yeah. that'll do. <laughs> I really recommend using the filters, and it's really intuitive to get there on the controller mm. as well, just to be able to quickly toggle things on and off. Because there's so much stuff in the game, I find it a really easy way to get exactly to what I need yeah. uh, compared to just trolling the menu. Yeah, I think Tom was just sort of duplicating stuff and dropping it down. And it, it, you've done an incredible job of making this feel comfortable on the controller. Mm -hmm. You can see them. We're putting down some educational material now. Yeah, yeah. more stuff to make the guests happy, basically. It's like uh, part of the zoo experience is teaching people about why animals need to be protected and what we can do to conserve them. And this is sort of like how we represent this in our game. Mm -hmm. And um, it ties back into the management and simulation as well, because the more educated your guests are, the happier they will be and, and the more money they will put in that shiny rotating donation box for you. And those so, you know, pandas got to eat. The, the those pandas, pandas got to eat. eat. <laughs> and they do eat a lot. They do out. eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of our favourite things here at Frontier is when we are working on Planet Zoo, we always have the meetings where we, you know, see the animals and we always get like animal facts. Oh, the animal and fact time is and so good. Like, it's it, basically an excuse for us all to send really cute animal pictures back and forth, mostly during uh, an entire meeting. Um, and it is usually just positive vibes only. It's really nice, actually. Learned Pretty quite good. a lot about animals by working in Planet Zoo. I know, and it's hard to be upset when you're looking at them. You're just saying, aww. <laughs> Yeah, Look and at them. you can see here from this map, you know, it's pretty dense, it's pretty full of people. Um, we will get a little bit more into the zoo complexity meter uh, after this, but just keep in mind, this is, I believe this is scenario four, three. three. Yeah, yeah, the third one. Um, and this is a roughly around 33%, I believe, on the zoo complexity meter. Yeah, yeah. and it's a beautiful park full yeah. of stuff and life and vibrancy. So, you know, there's a lot of room there for you to build your incredible zoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tom's done, Tom has done a good job. Yeah, just a uh, camera flyby as well. It's always, it's just really satisfying to fly around on a controller, I find. It's like it's really more zippy. To, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it zippy, does, yeah. it's lovely and smooth. It's got that nice feeling the to it. The cinematic feel. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and obviously we've got tools in there to help people, you know, take beautiful pictures and, yeah, and clips got, as well. Yeah, all of the same, you know, screenshot functionality and mm -hmm. the, yeah, the cinematic camera editor. It's just yeah. like really fun to make a little flyby basically and just watch it zoom around. So, yeah, there we go. That is a little look at the gameplay, which I really appreciate you guys taking us through it. Um, now, we'll have some information about the DLC. Now, obviously, we've released quite a number of DLCs on PC, but we have got the DLCs coming to console as well. So let's go through what we've got. So coming up on launch day, we will have two of the DLC packs available. So we will have the North America Animal Pack and the Europe Pack available as a bundle or to buy separately on launch day, which will be March 26th. Now, if you do get the Ultimate Edition, which contains the Season Pass, you will have these unlocked automatically. Now, we did speak a little bit about the Zoo Complexity Meter. So what we're going to do, since we've just mentioned the Europe Pack, mm -hmm. we're going to show you a little bit of footage from uh, the scenario in the Europe Pack to give you an idea of how the zoo complexity meter kind of evolves and what it's capable of. So let's play that footage. It's about a minute of footage, and it's worth saying this is about 50%. Yeah, yeah, on this the is zoo just, just over 50% in this one. Uh, I think we have a screenshot of it later on. Yes. Just the bar in the menu that tells you this, there is a UI that tells you this as you're getting close to the limit. But um, as you can see, it's just like we can build really dense parks on console just fine. Yeah. And um, there is so much more, you know, there's lots of space here to build into and it's encouraged on this scenario because you've got to do quite a bit. So. Yeah, I think the big thing from the community was like, someone was like, can you give us a number? And like, yeah. we can't. It's the complexity meter for a reason. It is quite complex. Yeah, this um, is the thing. It's like, you know, trees cost a certain amount, that kind of thing. But like animals and their habitats, you know, they vary like, differently on how much memory they're using, this kind of thing. So mm -hmm. we have a, yeah, limits for a reason to uh, not crash, that kind of much stuff. Much like in real life, there's a lot of complex underlying yeah. factors there <laughs> that will contribute. <laughs> wait you to can... slide that in. Yeah, wait to slide that in. But you can see, like you said, you know, there's so much space here and you're only at 55%. There's so much you can build here. Yeah. Yeah. So while we can't give you exact numbers because it's too complex, we can reassure you that there is lots of room for building, even with the zoo complexity meter. In fact,
uh, do we have a little screenshot, I think, of the soup, like of what you see? So this is what you'll see in game. So you can go into the menu. Yeah, tell go into the menu to check it on there. And like I said, you have some little in-world pop-ups when you're getting close to the limit, and then it'll, you know, stay up to remind you if you're getting close. Yeah, um, you will uh, no longer be able to like add anything else, and like animals will stop breeding, for example. But yeah, that was the Europe pack scenario is only fifty five, and I think when you do that fly through, you're like, there's a lot of detail in there's there. There's so much mm -hmm. there. <laughs> there's a lot of detail in that one. Right. We also said at the end of this, we would talk a little bit about the different editions that are available for pre-order and the DLC. So I am going to take you through that. So first of all, we do have the standard edition because. Uh, Planet Zoo Constellation is coming March 26th digitally to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. Now, the standard edition, which is available for pre-order, includes the base game, and then you have the option to pick up DLC packs or DLC bundles like the North America Animal Pack and Europe Pack bundle as you wish. We also have the deluxe edition available for pre-order, which is the base game. And it also comes with the Wetlands Animal Pack and the Southeast Asia DLC Pack. Now, while you won't be able to buy those two pieces of DLC separately, they're in the deluxe edition, if you buy the standard edition, you can upgrade to the deluxe edition to be able to pick up those packs. And then there's the ultimate edition, which is the base game, the Wetlands Animal Pack, the Southeast Asia Animal Pack, and the Season Pass which just gives you automatic asset, uh, access to the 14 additional DLC packs. Also for the DLC, we did mention that alongside the standard deluxe and ultimate, we'll be launching two of the DLC packs at the same time, either in a bundle or by themselves. And that is the North American animal pack and the Europe pack, of course, which will be included in the ultimate edition and available to buy separately or stand alone. Oh. <laughs>